Today's special lesson is about the differences that the Oculus Quest users seem to be having. Now, the Quest is its own version of a VR headset. It's using the Oculus Dash as its system. A lot of us others are using a PC, Windows, for example, to control a Vive or a Rift or a new Index. But there are a few differences between these two systems. These lessons try to cover both systems, but this one is specially focused on what are the differences you're going to encounter as a Quest user as opposed to what the more uh, heavier engine PCs are capable of. So in this case, we're going to start it with some of the more important tools and the way Quest is going to handle them. Now, because Oculus Dash doesn't have quite the capabilities of a full Windows PC, the selection tool is one of the ones that's most heavily affected. Here, I'm using a PC, so if I have a picture of a lot of pieces, one of the options I have in the selection tool is to long click and get these extras including select all, flip, and invert. The Quest does not have these extras. Select all, for example, grabs everything. So when I grab something, all of the pieces come together at once. With a Quest, I could still grab a normal selection tool and go around and select everything. And now I've got it all to grab and move around. It's just a little more cumbersome. PC users have that as one click. Similarly, the invert button. If I only select one thing, the invert button allows me to select everything else. Now that one piece is the only thing that isn't selected. Again, you can do this manually with a quest, but the PC users have that long click to get it as a specific option right off the bat. This is something the quest does not have. Final one in that set is the flip, where it does a mirror image of everything. None of those options are available on the Quest, partly due to the limitation of the Dash environment. Now, this is being done on July 2019. Google is always updating Tilt Brush, so perhaps by the time you see this, there may be an update. We are currently, the Quest users are using Tilt Brush 19. PC users have updated to a 20. 20.1, but this is the version that's specific to the Quest. So if you're looking for more information, Google does leave the release notes on the internet. Version 19 is the version specific for the Quest. So we've got selection tools as differences. Another difference is with the way it talks to the outside world. Since you can use your Google account for the Google Quest on Dash, it will connect to other services. So you can actually put your things up onto YouTube or save screenshots, that type of thing. But it does require being connected to a Google account. On PC, most of us actually do have a documents folder. Tilt Brush makes its own folder on your PC to keep things like screenshots, extra models, importing images, that type of stuff. Quest doesn't have access to a folder structure like that. You can save sketches, save screenshots and things using your Google account and Polly. We will actually do a lesson on all of doing all that from all the platforms, but that is the main way a Quest user is going to be saving and exchanging information, not directly from their device, but through their Google services. This another limitation of the Quest is the fact that a PC with a big graphics card can actually do multiple cameras. So things like my viewer's camera here, normally you can only see what's coming through the headset. So when a Quest does a video or a screenshot, it's showing what the artist sees. On a PC, we can set up extra cameras so I can have demonstration cameras called a spectator camera and that type of thing. The Quest can't do those. They just lack the power under the hood at this time. Hopefully in the future, these features will be added. Which means another little fun uh, tilt brush program is a program called Tiltosaurus, which allows other people to play a game with you. The person with the headset sees a word and they draw a picture based on that word. People watching the screen guess what that word is. So it's drawing pictures from a dictionary. Uh, it's based on some other game I don't remember the name of, but Quest doesn't have access to it because it requires that multiple camera mode. 
PCs can also export uh, their sketches to other programs. So Unity can use it for level design, that type of stuff. Dash doesn't have that export capability just yet. We're looking at ways using your Poly account, you can exchange sketches that way. So you could send a sketch to somebody on a PC who then converts it into something, uh, an object file that the uh, uh, 3D program can actually use. So it's limited on that type of exports, but there are steps you can take to make it a little bit easier. This is the Oculus Quest and the differences they're having uh, using the same tools in, tool in Tilt Brush. One useful tool that the Quest has that does not show up on the PC at this point is the memory warning. Since we are using a smaller device, it does have a system in place to let you know when your sketch is getting bigger than it can handle. All of these lines are made up of little tiny triangles, making the geometry. And a big computer can remember more than the smaller dash device. So it will actually bring up a warning when you're starting to draw too much in one picture, when it's starting to run out of memory space. Same thing will come up if you're loading in a sketch from somebody else, from Polly, from the sketches library. It will warn you if that sketch is getting to be a little too big, a little too much for it to handle. It actually has two levels. Level one is your, we're getting too big here. And level two is, that's it, you're way too big. And it'll start actually having problems. It won't prevent you from working with the sketch but you may start having issues like freezes, hesitations, that type of stuff. You can actually customize these in your setting. How much memory do you want for those warnings to have before they work? This is something the Quest users have to make up for the fact that they don't have as big of an engine as some of the Windows users might have on a big, expensive rig. Quest differences than the other headset users. One final thing we're going to look at for this particular class, again, you can look into the notes for version 19 for everything specific, but one last thing I wanted to look at is many Quest users have been having trouble with the perfect circle and the perfect sphere tools. Now with the perfect circle, I'm going to be doing it again nice and slow. The trick is to make a circle and then pass through the center point. So I'm going to activate my straight edge I've got a nice simple wire tool. I'm going to hold it, draw perfect circles around, and then through the center point is the main way to get it to happen. Again, it's circle around and then through the center point. For some people, using a guide makes that a little bit easier. So if I actually have a cube with a nice flat surface, I can use that flat surface to know where my center point is. Circle, circle, center point as a way to practice getting these things to happen. Now, you, because it's a flat surface, you can't use a guide to get a sphere. For PC users, it's exactly the same. Circle, circle, center point. Circle, circle, center point. It's now a perfect sphere. Kind of hard to tell with a wire, so I'm going to switch to my dots. Circle, circle, center point. We'll get there. And then again, circle, circle, center point. Now, it is a sphere of dots. Oculus Quest users, please let me know in the comments if anybody can get this to happen. If nobody can, it could be a limitation because this takes a huge number of triangles, a large number of polygons, so it may be a limitation that the dash can't quite get that to happen. Even if I select it and move it around, you can see by the outline, if you can see the outline, that there's a huge number of triangles making up this sphere. The way you get the half sphere is simply by making it so big, even the PC can't handle it. So it cuts the sphere in half as it runs out of triangles it can use. We were doing testing earlier and actually froze our machine by making big ass spheres and freaking the computer out. So I'm not going to be doing that right now. I'm going to grab this thing and get rid of it for the moment. But that's the way to practice. Perfect circles, it's just a matter of a straight line, circles, circles, straight through, and you can't see this at all, can you? So let's choose a dark color with an actual dark line. 
but almost any type of line will work. So I'm using my splatter, circle, circle, center point. Eventually, you'll get it. If, it's, if you can, continuing circle, circle, center point, will get that sphere if their machine can handle it. If you get it really big, not only will it cut it down, but you also run into that magical memory issue. But that's our playing for today, working with these uh, quest differences, what makes them a little bit different from our other tools. Um, mostly it comes down to what the poor device is capable of. And in many cases, it just doesn't have the memory for some of our more advanced tools. So, subscribe. Now, bear in mind, they're going to be updating this and changing this as we go, so hopefully we'll get more advanced tools, less limitations in the future. We'll be updating these lessons as they do, so hopefully we'll have a future lesson on how to get the Quest users using some of these more advanced tools. Let us know in the comments. We also would like to do a shameless plug here. We would like to do some lessons using the Quest and using the Index. That is in the works right now. If you would like to have it happen faster, feel free to contribute generously to our Patreon channel. We are setting those up as goals to get the different headsets so we can do lessons specifically for those headsets. So thank you for joining us for today. We're going to see you in other lessons. Have fun with Tilt Brush.